How's it going, guys? We have a medium difficulty question for step one. A nearly identical one shows up on one of the offline step one NBME exams, okay? Exceedingly high yield stuff. We could spend 41 minutes talking about every little fucking detail about all these receptors here, all the drugs, every little thing you need to know. Discussion can get very fucking confusing very fucking fast. So I'm going to stay concise here, not waste our time. So before we get started, please subscribe to my channel. Really appreciate it. Give the video a like. Really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram at melman underscore medical, M-E-H-L-M-A-N underscore medical. Link is down below. Find me on Telegram. Recently created Telegram group and channel. Links are down below. Now let's start the clip. During the post-op recovery period for perforated diverticulitis, a 64-year-old man develops instability. His vitals are temperature 103 Fahrenheit, heart rate 110, respiratory rate 22, blood pressure 80 on 40. Dopamine therapy is administered as treatment, stimulation of which the following is most likely to be beneficial for this patient. Now look, this guy has septic shock. Dopamine is administered. It's an unusual treatment, okay? We classically give norepinephrine for septic shock. Not my fucking opinion. It's on the NBME exam, as I said. Dopamine therapy, classically given for cardiogenic shock. I've seen this as a correct answer. Give dopamine on one of the pediatric forms for TCK for the clinical mastery series, okay? In the setting of cardiogenic shock. Now, what you need to know about dopamine is that at low doses... It'll obviously bind to its dopamine receptors, D1, D2, etc. As dose of dopamine increases, then it can increasingly bind to the other adrenergic receptors, alpha, beta, etc. Now, as I said, there's a lot of detail regarding these receptors, but some key points here. In the setting of septic shock, we're going to have peripheral vasodilatation mediated by TNF-alpha. IL-1 is fever. TNF-alpha causes vascular permeability, peripheral vasodilatation, very high yield. We need to agonize alpha-1 in order to treat septic shock, okay? This is really, really, really important. So dopamine at high doses can do this. Okay? It can perform this, okay? So alpha-1 agonism is our answer. It's going to uh, constrict the arterioles, increase blood pressure. Now look, some uh, important points here, because some of you are going to be confused right now, is D2 is all the psych stuff. This doesn't relate to vasculature for all intents and purposes, okay? Like D2 agonism, that's how we treat Parkinsonian stuff. D2 antagonism, that's how we treat psychosis, right? All the antipsychotics are D2 antagonists. Uh, metoclopramide, antiemetic, prokinetic. D1 is on renal afferent arterioles. Uh, there's, a, there's an obscure drug called phenoldopam that will agonize uh, the renal afferent arterioles. It's low yield. You don't need to worry about it, okay? But the point is D2 is all the psych stuff. It doesn't relate to vasculature. So you need to know dopamine can bind to the other receptors. Now, I just want to mention this high yield point, and as I said, it can get confusing, the discussion. But I said at the uh, start of this clip that norepinephrine is classically used for septic shock, not epinephrine, okay? And the reason is because alpha-1 constricts peripherally, beta-2 dilates peripherally, okay? Now, if we give epinephrine, well, we will get an increase in blood pressure, but we're going to have a partial beta-2 effect that would cause peripheral vasodilation that counteracts the constriction, okay? The alpha-1 will win, we get increased blood pressure, but there is still some beta-2 effect, a dilatory effect. We want to eliminate this altogether in septic shock. We don't want any uh, vasodilatory effect whatsoever. So we give norepinephrine, which will only agonize alpha-1, alpha-2, beta-1. Epinephrine is alpha-1, alpha-2, beta-1, beta-2, okay? Does that sound fucking confusing? I know, but as I said, I was going to stay consolidated with this clip. What I want you to take home is this. For septic shock, you need to agonize alpha-1 receptors, okay? Dopamine can bind to all receptors as dose increases. And you need to know that norepinephrine only binds to alpha-1, alpha-2, beta-1. Epinephrine binds to all four, alpha-1, alpha-2, beta-1, beta-2. In the setting of septic shock, we don't want any beta-2. So we're going to give norepinephrine classically. You know the deal. I'm going to continue to make more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe to my channel. And I appreciate your time. That's it.